her name, uh, but I play a woman who's having a final conversation with her lover. Uh, this was a play written in 1930s by Cocteau, and it's, um, it's one phone call uh, over the course of an hour, and you don't hear the other person, you don't hear the man's voice, and you don't see him. So it's all about her interacting with this person at the end. Well, I think certainly in terms of putting it on in the first place, you know, lockdown meant that we had to look for plays that were one person shows because it's you're less likely to get COVID or pass it round. Um, so Sonia was looking for sort of one man shows and this was one that Ivo had in his repertoire and I wanted to work with Ivo again. So of course, COVID meant that this happened. Uh, but also, yeah, in terms of the context of the material, it's really about loneliness, about isolation, about communicating with people through an inanimate object. It's about being trapped in a space that you can't get out of. Um, and and a kind of how that, that isolation and that claustrophobia can sort of make you go mad. So yeah, it def definitely <laughs> fed into the whole play. And my own experience, I mean, my partner lives in New York, so we had the whole communication over COVID through a phone. So of course, there was some elements of that that I could understand entirely. And you sometimes think, well, this isn't the same. I can't touch you, I can't see you, I can't feel you. Um, so is this really real? And there's something about that in this play. I don't know, it's a very unique experience working with Ivo. He's, uh, he comes with Jan, so the two of them work together. and. Yeah, and designs the space, understands what the space is, and they do that well in advance. So they have their ideas of what they want to create and what the play is to them. And in some ways it's very choreographed, um, but it's really freeing too and liberating. I always feel that Evo doesn't really work from a purely psychological space, i.e. he doesn't sort of ask you to sort of go into the subtext, he kind of asks you to physicalise all the subtext rather than sort of thinking it. So he takes, he gets me out of my head a lot and it makes me, he sort of has such brilliant ideas and things that make me, his, his ideas are inspiring. And they always, whenever he says something, gives me direction, I kind of smile because I think it's sort of quite brilliant and funny and completely bizarre. So to me, it's like something so different to how usual directors approach the material and the work. And from that, you get something quite sort of spontaneous and impulsive, something that feels kind of pure naturalism, but then also sort of performance art too. So I think there's something really interesting in that mix. Just that you might forget your lines, you might not know what you're doing. It's it's the it's the scariest thing I feel like I've done because every more every day going on set, on stage, there's no one to save you. There's no one to kind of catch you if you do forget or if, or there's no one to bounce off. I've just got to purely bounce off myself. And I can't even bounce off the audience because I've got a, it's like I've got a glass screen there. So it's quite a strange, intimate, intense experience actually. Uh, but once you get on there, it's just the stage is mine and it's fine. But it's the build up before, it's quite nerve wracking. <laughs> I've got no answers, sorry. That's the end of an interview, I need a drink. Anyway. <laughs>